the previous lectures of spectroscopy, we have talked about mainly the techniques which uh, involves either absorption or scattering. But today we are going to start with a new branch of spectroscopy which is not based on absorption or scattering but it exploits or it uses the resonance technique. So today we are going to talk about the resonance spectroscopies. In resonance spectroscopies we have mainly NMR and ESR but in today's lecture, we are going to focus upon NMR spectroscopy. Myself, Mamta Sethi. To read about these topics in details, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing, the link to which is given in the description box. So, NMR spectroscopy stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. So as the name itself clarifies that it is a resonance technique and it is indeed a very powerful analytical tool for the characterization of organic compounds. So most of the chemists, in fact biochemists also rely completely on NMR spectroscopy for the characterization of the new molecules that they are synthesizing. So in today's lecture, we will talk about the basic principle of uh, NMR spectroscopy, what type of molecules will uh, show NMR spectra and then how many types of spectra do we get and the instrumentation part of NMR spectrophotometer as well. So let's begin with, uh, you know, what NMR spectroscopy is. So NMR spectroscopy is based on the magnetic properties of certain nuclei. So we all know that a nucleus is a charged species and when these charged species they are under rotation, they revolve these nuclei, they rotate about their own axis, they generate a magnetic field and therefore this nucleus acts as a tiny bar magnet and it is this magnetic property of the nucleus that the NMR spectroscopy is entirely based upon. So the uh, NMR spectroscopy is basically uh, you know restricted to or we may say that it is shown by those nucleus which have nuclear spin quantum number greater than zero. So that is the spin quantum number or nuclear spin has to be greater than zero. So we'll talk about what nuclear spin is and how do we decide the nuclear spin of a particular nuclei. But let's now understand that how NMR spectroscopy works. So those nuclei which have I greater than zero they show a certain specific orientations when they are kept under the effect of external magnetic field. And once they uh, align themselves either along the magnetic field or against the magnetic field, there generates uh, an energy gap. And then that gap with the help of radio frequency radiation, when the molecule absorbs the nuclei, it absorbs the energy from the electromagnetic radiation and it goes into the excited state and once it comes back to the ground state, it re releases or emits energy which is recorded as a NMR signal. So NMR spectroscopy basically has got many many applications which involves in the field of medicine, in the field of biochemistry, physics and uh, in the field of industries as well. So before we begin with the uh, basic principle uh, of NMR spectroscopy, let's first understand the term nuclear spin. So nucleus being composed of neutrons and protons, it is a charged species. 
there are no set rules for calculating this nuclear spin but based on the value of the atomic number and atomic mass we can put all these nuclei into various categories for example those nuclei which have uh, mass as well as atomic number uh, odd they are put into the category of the nuclei which have half integral spin that is their nuclear spin is either going to be half or the multiple of half so proton is one such example which has i equal to half so for proton i is half so half integral such species are also called as fermions then we have uh, you know the nuclei which have uh, you know this z odd and a that is mass number is even for example this carbon 13 right so mass number is 13 which is odd but the atomic number is even so such species will have again this uh, you know nuclear spin as half integral but those species which have uh, you know uh, mass number as even and odd atomic number so they are put into the category of integral spin their spin is going to be integral so for example deuterium which is an isotope of hydrogen for this i is one right so such species are also called as boson and those species for which both z and a are even they are supposed to have i equal to zero so we now have broadly three types of nuclei which have either i equal to zero or i half integral multiple or i can have only integral value out of which we are going to consider or focus upon only the species which have non-zero i because that is the basic requirement for any nucleus to show nmr spectra right so those species which have i equal to zero they are considered to be nmr inactive so let us now understand that how you know this nuclear spin uh, originates and how many values or how many different value values it can take so we have understood that uh, i equal to half is possible for those species which have either mass or atomic number odd so proton let's understand that proton how many orientations a proton can uh, take so for proton i is half we all know that i is half for a proton so the number of possible orientation for any nuclei are given by 2i plus 1 the formula is 2i plus 1 so i for proton is 2 half so therefore 2 into half plus 1 so that is 2 so proton can have 2 values of nuclear spin what are those two values they can either be plus half or minus half therefore we can say that when kept in a magnetic field a proton can assume two nuclear spin values plus half is designated by alpha spin proton is said to have alpha spin if the nuclear spin value is half and it is called as beta spin if it is having nuclear spin value equal to minus half so proton can assume two values of nuclear spin so this is alpha is called as spin up and beta state is called as spin down state for a proton now after understanding that the two values that a proton can assume we now in a stage where we can understand that how uh, a proton gives rise to a signal in the radio frequency region so this 
slide basically will focus upon how an NMR signal is obtained. So we have understood that there are two values of uh, you know nuclear spin for proton those two values plus and minus half are degenerate in the absence of any magnetic field external magnetic field. So what happens when a magnetic field is applied then the nuclear spins which were earlier you know randomly oriented in different direction will now try to align themselves either along the field so if this is let's say the direction of the external magnetic field when this magnetic field is applied then the nuclei will try to align themselves either along the field or they may align themselves against the field. So basically the randomly oriented nuclei are now organized in this fashion. Now in the absence these two uh, you know nuclear spin they are degenerate means they will have equal energy. Now once the magnetic field is applied as I said that they will assume either the orientation which is parallel to the magnetic field or anti-parallel. Now these two uh, states will have different energy. They are no longer degenerate and the splitting which they undergo because of the external applied magnetic field the lower energy state will be the one which will have plus half that is this is your alpha spin state and minus half that is your beta spin state is going to be higher in energy. Now that we can see that an energy gap is created. So it is this gap which will give rise to the signal in the NMR. So I repeat once again that these nuclei which were earlier oriented you know randomly in different direction are now aligned along the field or against the field in the presence of magnetic field and therefore the earlier degenerate states are now split into two energy states one is lower in energy the other is in a higher energy state. So in the first part of our presentation we have learned about uh, nuclear spin what are the different values that a nucleus can have of the nuclear spin and how do these nuclear spin give rise to two different energy levels. Now in the next part we are going to uh, you know understand the mechanism of absorption of energy coming from the electromagnetic spectrum which will give rise to the spectrum. To read about these topics in details you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing the link to which is given in the description box. If you like my video please like subscribe and share press the bell icon for future notification. Thank you. without the permission of the copyright holder.